Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. If we are angry, if anger boils up, and this especially if it happens a lot, it's because it's in here. We need to stop looking around at the situation and at other people. It doesn't matter. In one sense, God can take care, God will take care of his people. God can take care of situations. But the one, the one that God is interested in is you. When he allows a situation that causes anger to boil out of your heart, it's because he wants you to face it and me and recognize and be willing to ask that question, Lord, what are you saying to me in this? Do you believe there's a God who wants to reveal himself in these areas? Do you think if we really come to him with an honest heart and say, Lord, I know this is in here. I don't even know why it's in here, Lord. In your time and in your way, if needed, take me on a tour so I can see what's going on down here and you can heal whatever it is that's causing that volcano to be there. Because it wasn't in Jesus. You know, there was a kind of anger that came out of him, but it wasn't like ours. Don't ever lie to yourself and say, oh, this is righteous anger because they did wrong. They may have. Did they do wrong when they, the way they treated Jesus and crucifying him? Sure. That's about as wrong as you can get. And Jesus said, Jesus didn't answer a word time after time. And on the cross before he died, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Are you that free? I'm not. We need, we need the Lord, don't we? And, and when you can't just generalize this glorious picture of Jesus living in us. It's got to get down to these issues. If these things are in us, they didn't come from him. And we need God to deliver us and to show us our hearts and bring them to him, confess what they are. We come as we are. Didn't we sing that this morning? Oh, what a selection of songs. Praise God. God was leading this morning. But oh, I tell you, there's, we're afraid to be honest. So I can't even admit that because then God wouldn't love me. If I were really that bad, I'm, I'm just not that bad. Folks, he can save the worst of the worst. We can be honest with him about the true condition of our hearts and the needs and the things that want to rise up. We can tell the truth. We can, we can confess the truth. And know that he loves us and he's willing to help us. All he's looking for is an honest heart. Look at what David went through in Psalm 51. Read through that sometime. When it really dawned on him what he'd done, he was absolutely open, broken. Oh God, you're a hundred percent wrong. I'm a hundred, I mean, you're a hundred percent right. I'm a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> anyway, you got the idea. No excuses, no nothing, but just here I am, Lord. I need to be cleansed. And he'll do it. And if, if these things are coming out and they represent a failure at that point, can we not bring them to him? But doesn't he want us to go beyond the fact that we just messed up and begin to attack the reasons we're messing up because we're, we have learned how to yield to something and it may be, in many of us, it may be something that happened in our life that has just put this feeling, this sense, this weakness down in there. We've learned how to react to life in a certain way. Only God can take us down the road that will lead us away from those things. Has he not provided for that, or is this just a half salvation? It's him living in us. So you see all these things that, that have to do with our relationships one with another and how God wants us to learn how to say no and to gain the actual practical victory so that they do, these things do not control us. We can be with somebody who can be really mad, mad and nasty and whatever and God can give us a peace. Do you really believe that God can do that for you? 
whatever, the weak, whatever your particular weakness is. You've got them. So do I. But some of these things affect every single one of us. And that's the reason Paul enumerates them. He, he lays them out. He said, we're going to have to learn how to say no. All right? And he goes right back to the, to the foundation. Don't do this since you have taken off your old self with its practices. See, again, it's not just this vague old self. It's with its practices and have put on the new self, which is what? Being renewed. There's that language of an ongoing process of something God is doing to change us. Don't be discouraged by the process, but, but engage the process. Don't just sit there and say, well, this is as good as it gets. I'm okay. I'm not out there robbing banks, murdering people. If we're not like Jesus, he's working on us. If there's any part of our life that's not, that not, that's not him coming out, then he's working on us. Thank God he's patient. Thank God he'll... He works with us, but we need to be to, to really live our lives in the knowledge of this and actively ask Him, God, I need you to change me. I'm not just recognizing that you're doing it. I'm not just recognizing it and resenting it because you're messing with my life. I'm wanting you to change me because my heart is set on what is coming, not what is here. My mind sees where you're going with this. My heart agrees with that. And so on that ground, I say, oh, God, set me free. I want to enter into the life that you've purchased for me at such a price. Praise God, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, and now he begins to transition into something where we, up to now, it's almost been an individual thing. It's all about me, and we're, I'm looking at my own nature and how it wants to react, and I'm having to learn to say no. But now he's reminding me, I'm not alone. He's brought me into a fellowship of a family that is unlike any on earth because he says, here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Oh, what an awesome reality that is. World, the world is so full of division. Me and my group, and we resent everybody else, and, and we got people that are trying to tear down this country. I'll throw in this for free. They're trying to tear down this country and destroy it, and one of their greatest tools is to set every group against every other one. But God is establishing a kingdom where every earthly boundary. Every earthly division is gone. We need to have a heart that's open to those that Christ has purchased with his blood and lives in. They are our brothers and their sisters, not a matter of who you are from, a, from an earthly standpoint. We have a heavenly calling. We have a brand new life, and it's Christ in us. If Christ is in me and Christ is in you, then we're brother and sister, whatever is appropriate. That's what he's talking about. Praise God. Thank God I'm not alone. You ever feel just alone and struggling? We all do it one time or another. But we're not alone. God has brought us into, into an incredible reality. Therefore, again now on the foundation of what he's been saying, now we have a therefore as God's chosen people. You want to know who God's chosen people are? These are them. doesn't matter whether Jew or Gentile. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with those who are in Christ, those who, those who have been bought with his blood, those who have been born into an eternal kingdom. That's what it's all about. God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. I'll throw this in. That's a, that's a bridge too far for a lot of folks to really get a hold of that. I confess my need to get this in a deeper way. Can you really look inside your heart and, said, and, and really truthfully say, I am dearly loved by a holy God. I, in spite of all that I lack and all that I am, I am dearly loved. 
I am dearly loved. I pray that God will make that more real to me and more real to you because emotionally we have a hard time signing on to that one. Life has a way of forming us and defining us in so, so many other ways, so many ways that are of this world. But if you're in Christ, you are chosen. You are dearly loved. In spite of your needs, in spite of everything you think is wrong with you and may be wrong with you, you are dearly loved. And God wants us to come with a confidence in Him like we don't have to constantly prove that I belong to you. Oh, thank God. We can find a peace and a rest on this foundation. We can build knowing that it, like Paul, we, we, we're reaching forth for something. We haven't arrived there yet. We've got to still press through. We've got to deal with issues day by day by day. But we're, we're on the way and we have a solid foundation and a solid hope. Okay? I feel like maybe this is one of those things where God wants to continue to put the foundation, not only the foundation, but the, what he, where he's going with it, how to build on that. It's almost like what Brother Thomas preached so many years ago. I mean, every, has anybody here ever got all of this? You, you've just arrived at all of this understanding. You're living the deeper life. You're, you're living everything. No, we, this is where God's dealing with us right now. We've got a foundation that's incredible. What are we doing with it? What kind of life are we actually living out? What's coming out of us? What do people see? What do, we, what do they experience in us? Do they experience Christ or do they experience us, human nature? Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves. Now we're getting into the positive aspects of Christ's nature. Being like him, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Not one of these characteristics come from human nature. We may have limited imitations of them, but I'll tell you, there's nothing. This, this, if I'm going to be this way, it's going to have to be supernatural. It does not exist in me except through Christ. Amen. If he's here, though, I have the power to actually give expression to those if I will. That's where choice comes in. And so Paul, Paul wants people to engage in that. Now, how would I know that I need something like this? You think the Lord just might bring us down a pathway and lead us to circumstances where that isn't how we react? And what's the, what's the appropriate response? To wallow in pain, go eat a box of chocolates? Or to say, Lord, you have brought me this way to show me my need. But I know I'm dearly loved. And I know Jesus isn't this way. And I bring my sin, my failure to you, but I'm looking to you to live in me. Help me right now to make a choice to believe in your power at work in me so that I can actually live out what you told me to be. You see how a day by day by day exercise of that kind of thing, God's going to lead us step by step forward. I mean, how do you build muscles all at once? No, you have to exercise every single day, and it's not always fun. Now, some people, I guess it is, but most of us, it's not fun to put up with that resistance, and, and, and we get to tomorrow, and we need a little bit more. Oh, Lord. But how else do we grow if we don't face things that challenge what we are and who we are? But God is faithful, isn't he? And remember, he's not going to put you in a situation that by his grace you can't handle. All right. All right? So all these awesome qualities, they come right straight out of the heart of Jesus. We see it in his interaction with people, even those who are terrible sinners. Compassion, kindness, humility gentleness and patience. Bear with each other. Oh, now we get down to the nitty-gritty. And that, that focuses on the reality that in this process, we ain't perfect. You are going to run into members of the body of Christ who are going to really mess up big time, and it's going to affect you emotionally. How do we deal with it? How does Christ deal with it? Truthfully, 
But does he get up high and mighty and say, straighten up and fly right? What's the matter with you down there? I'm disgusted with you, about to throw you out. There is a love that wants to reach down and lift up. Folks, do you want people to put up with you? Well, we need to put up with each other. We need to recognize it, be realistic about where we're at and the fact that we are human. We have faults, we have failings, we have needs. And God has called us to be like the Savior in that respect. We love one another where our heart is to reach up or reach down and lift up and encourage. All right? Bear with, with each other and forgive each other. Forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's not a new, new idea, is it? But if God's going to reproduce the very nature of Christ in me, how can I do less than be willing to forgive? Now, I realize emotionally sometimes we just say, I just can't. Well, the truth is you can't. If you're trying to, trying to pull on human nature, it ain't there, folks. We're going to have to say, I'm willing if you just strengthen, you make me able. I'm willing if you will enable me, Lord. And you're going to have to do it. How many of you remember the, the scene in that movie? What was the name of the overcomer? That grandmother who was so bitter. And then she wound up realizing she, needed, she had a need in this area. She said, oh, God, you're going to have to help me. He did, didn't he? Isn't that what God's looking for? Don't, doesn't he need to bring us to a place where we not only feel our need, but we're crying out and saying, oh, God, I need your help. I need you to change me. Isn't that a prayer that he longs to hear and longs to answer? Can't we make progress in this, in this Christian life? That's what he's talking about. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Every single one of these, in one way or another, is an expression of divine love. And you remember what John said in his first letter. We love because he first loved us. In this way, his love is com made complete. God just doesn't love you so you can have this private little love fest. He l poured his love into you so it could pour through you to other people. How else is God going to spread his love? That's how he means to do it. That's how he did it with his son. His son just didn't bottle up and say, boy, I'm tired of these crazy people. I don't feel like loving them. But he didn't hold back. There was nothing but pure love that, that people felt. Even the woman at the well, with all of her history, she sensed something in him that didn't just run her down and reject her because of who she was, but reached out in mercy and in love. And it drew her out of a cesspool of sin to recognize that there was somebody who loved her and wanted her to have a new life. Oh, how we need that with one another. And how God is so ready. He's so ready to share himself if we're just willing and we recognize that we have a need. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. You know, I think we've probably made the point many times and maybe you've heard others make it. It's kind of like in baseball, you've got an umpire that calls balls and strikes. How do we know we're on the right track? It's not always an emotion. But I'll tell you, there can be a, there, there's a peace that God puts all the way down in the bottom of our soul. We're at peace with Him. We know we're, there's no controversy. There's no, I'm mad at you, God, because you didn't do things my way on my schedule. There is a yieldedness. There is a humbling of ourselves under the mighty hand of God so He can lift us up when it's proper, when it's the proper time. That's what he's looking for. Just somebody like a, with childlike faith that says, Lord, I'm yours. I want to be in harmony with you in every area of my life. And Lord, and, and what's the result of that? It's peace, isn't it? And we get something that disturbs our peace. We want to go a certain way. We want a certain thing. And there's no peace. You better step back. God has a way that he wants to lead us. He knows about our earthly lives and our earthly needs, but they have a heavenly purpose. 
That's why Paul says, set your, set your affections on things that are above your hearts, your minds. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Now, you could just sort of blow right over that, but think about all that he's been talking about. He's been talking about coming face to face with the ugliness of our own human nature on a personal level. You're having to come face to face with it and recognize it and say, the problem is in here. I have allowed my flesh to rule over me, I have allowed my old nature to rule over me. Thank you, Lord. Let's put this in its context. Is God doing you a loving, merciful favor when he allows you to feel that and sense that need? Yeah. It's because he longs for us to face it and know that we need him and cry out to him, and he's ready right there to lift us up. And so in the midst of all of this that, he, that Paul has been talking about, we have every reason to say, thank you, Lord, for not leaving me like I am. God, if I followed my own inclinations, I would be lost. But you didn't let me. You came to me. You rescued me at the cost of your own son's life. Thank God. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. Now we're helping each other with all wisdom. Sometimes we don't use wisdom, do we? We need God's wisdom. <laughs> with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, we talked about how the Christian life works and then the foundation for it all. You know, between the history of what God has done for us and our destiny, here, here's, here's today. But now Paul gets down to the nitty-gritty, doesn't he? There are things, there are appetites that will rise up in your flesh that God, we need divine grace in order to use these bodies the way God intended us to use them in this world. Don't be dismayed when your old life shows up and, try, and, and demands control, and particularly if you've, got, if you've got a situation where you have yielded over decades sometimes, you've yielded in this area, There's, there may be a battle, there will be a battle. But you have the power through Christ to begin to say no and begin to gain the victory over that. So praise God. I'll just leave it at that and just trust God because I, I need this every bit as much as you. We are all on a journey. Every one of us has aspects of our old nature that still want to rule and call the shots that we need to recognize I have this need Lord, you are the only answer to my need. Jesus, give me the victory right here, right now, so that I can act, I can act out. I don't mean pretend, but I mean to, to live out your life instead of mine. Praise God. Is God faithful? Amen. 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 This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. While it is not required, a donation of $10 for DVDs and $5 for CDs is suggested to help with expenses. Also, for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your requests to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.